pleasant good evening and a warm welcome to News Hour on the Weekend with me, Ibrahim Samura. Coming up tonight, President Jos Marabiu is in Accra, Ghana to attend the sixth extraordinary session of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of States and Government. Football fans gathered in various cinemas to watch the opener of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations between the host nation Cameroon and Burkina Faso. And field workers of Statistics Sierra Leone expressed concerns over delay in some payments. These are more stories lined up in this edition of News R. But first, let us take our public health message on coronavirus. That was our public health message on COVID-19. Get yourself vaccinated and stay safe. President Jilos Marabio has arrived safely in Accra, Ghana to attend the sixth extraordinary session of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government. The session will focus on the Republic of Mali political situation in particular. The sixth extraordinary session being held in Ghana will focus on Mali's political situation, which has been a major concern in the West African subregion, culminating into attendance from six heads of states from the subregion to participate in the summits. We will bring you details of that report. Field workers of Statistics Sierra Leone who participated in the census have expressed concern over the delay of their training allowances and 30% prior payment to the commencement of the work. They raised these concerns during the payment process taking place at Statistics Sierra Leone Freetown office. Dennis Fraser has the details. As Statistics Sierra Leone continues rounding off the census process, it has also started payments of training allowances to field workers assigned to various enumeration areas across the country. However, the process seemed slow with contentions in the verification exercise. This has resulted to discontent on the part of field workers. According to them, it was expected that these monies would have been paid a long while ago, even after the 10 days training exercise but it's happened otherwise this particular money went for people so what would they suffer for, for over three days i have been here for the past three days but up till now i have not been given my training allowance they told us that the money would be given to our supervisors who in turn would be paying up but it was not so during the training process, my middle name was omitted because of space on my identity card, but I did not take it as an issue, only for me to come here and I was told that I would not be paid because my middle name was being omitted from my identification. They are yet to rectify this issue, which is not a fault on my part. I am an enumerator at Calabar Town. I feel good now that I have finally gotten my training allowance. Though it is long overdue, but my only hope is that the process will be scaled up and that this will not be the case when it will be the time for the remainder of our salaries to be paid. Next time, 
and we're able to improve on the on the facilities. Now we did go and do the census, midterm census, twenty twenty. I am a field worker who participated in the midterm census. I am first of all happy that I have been given my tailing allowance. However, the issue I have is with the 30% allowance which I have not received till now, even though some of my colleagues have received theirs. We faced lots of intimidations during our work in the field, so it is only expected that at this time we should have our monies. Meanwhile, on the part of Statistics Sierra Leone, just after training, everything was in place for logistics and payments. But due to unforeseen challenges, they had to hold on to the payment of training allowances for financial reasons, but paid 30% upfront of salaries to field workers with a remainder of 70% pledged to be given at the end of the midterm census. had people who trained and we dropped them. Okay. Right? Um, and a few days, three, four days after, we realized that there's need for them to continue. Okay? Now, we had almost completed the payments by the banks, or the banks have completed payments for everybody. All right? After that, then we called those people because we needed them. We noticed that there were some. Gaps in the Today is the third day of the days allotted by Statistics CLU for paying in allowances to supervisors as well as enumerators who took part in the census process. But as it is this year, the process seems chaotic and as well becoming more disorganized. And that has brought so much dissatisfaction on the part of these people here who has raised concern about the process altogether. As part of the inclusive participatory constitutional review project, the Center for Accountability and Rule of Law, CAL, has held a press conference to urge the government of Sierra Leone to publish the white paper and to expedite a constitutional bill on this entire constitutional review process. The conference was held at their circular office in Freetown. Cecilia Sisi now reports. In line with their mandate to promote an equal society for all persons in Sierra Leone through monitoring of institutions of accountability and transparency, the Center for Accountability and Rule of Law, Carl Sierra Leone, has in a press conference urged the government of Sierra Leone in line with the mandate to promote an equal society for all persons in Sierra Leone through monitoring of institutions of accountability and transparency, the Center for Accountability and Rule of Law, Carl Sierra Leone, has in a press conference urged the government of Sierra Leone to expedite the process of the constitutional review by publishing the white paper and a constitutional bill that is owned, acceptable, and reflects the views and aspirations of the public. Ibrahim Tami is the executive director, Carl Sierra Leone. Expressing our gratitude to the Open Society in Chile for West Africa, Osiwa, for having approved the $100,000 grant to Carl and the partners that I've just um, mentioned um, to work on the ongoing constitutional review process with a view to ensuring that citizens are kept informed and are obviously made aware of what the progress is happening in, in, in the context of the constitutional review process. The project is intended to ensure a speedy, accountable, and citizen-led constitutional review process, which will create a mechanism to foster effective interaction between the government and civil society. 
Once the white paper is released, Castillo Leone will engage in a project with a coalition of other civil society organizations to let citizens know and understand the content of the white paper and every stage of the constitutional review process. First, to work with the government to ensure the process is as transparent, is as open, is as inclusive, is as participatory as is possible. Beyond working with the government to make sure that that happens, we also want to ensure that members of the public are kept informed of what is happening because it is one thing to have a report, it is another to have a white paper, but ultimately it is more important to ensure that members of the public for whom any constitution is made are aware of the content of Accountability and transparency is a key characteristic of good governance, as it is the responsibility of every democratic government to give account and the right of every citizen to know about the affairs of the state. SLBC News Hour, Cecilia Sisi. Juggling revelations were made by the Saloon police during their press briefing, wherein a car loaded with unregistered trauma doll boxes have been seized. The police also revealed the seizure of several thousands of fake dollar bills in the arms of two Nigerian nationals living in Saloon. Julian Koroma was part of the press briefing and our reports. 11,470 boxes of unregistered and illegal tremador were stockpiled in a car shipped into Queen Elizabeth II Key. However, the Transitional Organized Crime Unit at the port was apt to call medical professionals to identify the full detail of the drug. We discovered that uh, this tremador, which they claimed to be for two to five, realize that the for another time addressing supporters and stalwarts dr alex prince hardin stressed the need for peace unity and national cohesion among supporters jonathan turner tells us more <laughs> It was all pomp and pageantry as hundreds of SLPP supporters and stalwarts came out in their numbers with dancing and singing to welcome the chairman elect. In the just concluded SLPP National Delegates Conference, Dr. Prince Alex Hardy at the party's headquarters in Freetown. <laughs> Supporters trooped in from different zones across the country as a demonstration of unity and acceptance on his re-election for the chairmanship. Dr. Prince Alex Hardin, dressed in white, appeared tough with zeal and zest, processing with the crowd to the Unity Hall. Addressing hundreds of SLPP supporters and stalwarts, Dr. Prince Alex Hardin underscored the importance of peace, unity, and national cohesion among members of the party, whilst appreciating the rank and file for the confidence he posted in him by electing him as chairman of the party for another term. He called on all to come on board to support the vision of the leader of the party, President Retired Brigadier Dr. Julius Madabio, and put aside all indifferences and work as a united force in ensuring President Bill wins the 2023 presidential elections. Speaker after speaker, including youth, emphasized the need to embrace each and every one, saying in the SLPP that we are no losers. 
being chaired by uh, Dr. Harding does not discriminate anyone who contested and lost the election. It was a contest, and of course, in, in contest, there must be a winner. Uh, the executive of Dr. Harding uh, is going to make sure that whosoever contested and, and lost in the uh, delegate election is allowed to do whatever he can. As the 2020 election is around the corner, the event in the fight the rallying of members at home and abroad to provide victories for the SLPP in 2023 general elections. For SLPP News, Jonathan Tona reporting. To mark the start of its centenary celebration, St. Edward Secondary School in Freetown has begun its lineup of event with a marathon parade from Howe Street to the school premises at Kintown. Dennis Fraser was there for the SLBC. <laughs> The history of St. Edward's is no stranger to Sierra Unions. It is a school that has accorded opportunities to all who have passed through it to become an envy of society. The school which was established on 6 February 1922 as a missionary school has been a great academic province which has produced astute individuals and statesmen and women that have made tremendous contributions towards the development of the nation. In line with its centenary celebrations with the theme 100 years of excellence, the school has a calendar of events starting with lightning of the torch and a marathon from foundation site of the school at Up Street to the school grounds at King Tom in Freetown. However, it became more colorful at the school grounds where the atmosphere was sparkled with lightning of the centenary flames and the formal opening of the celebrations announced by the Archbishop of Freetown Diocese, Archbishop Tamba Charles. Various prominent past Edwardians made brilliant speeches of admiration of how far the school have come and what it hopes to achieve in the future. It's a big achievement for us. It's 100 years, not 100 days, not 100 weeks, not 100 months. Um, we've come a long way. And I think uh, we are privileged to see this moment as students, as old students, and as current students. And um, we are not fortunate to see the golden jubilee anniversary of our school. We are fortunate to see the 100 years, and we are proud of that. And as, a, as an Edwardian, we are proud that you see this moment, and we shall be proud and, uh, and, uh, and celebrate this moment. The theme for the center celebration is um, 100 years of excellence and that is excellence in academia in education both in primary and secondary education and, and also excellence in various spheres various fields in sports um, in culture um, in entertainment um, everywhere in the country you go you certainly meet a prominent Edwardian who is uh, making a mark as Edwardians, both past and present, are gearing up for activities, many past Edwardians from the diaspora are also in the country and others on their way coming. In order to grace the lineup of events to celebrate 100 years of excellence of the great St. Edwards, SFC News Hour, Dennis Fraser reporting. <laughs> The Army Director of Gender, Colonel M.S. Fofana, has maintained that issues of gender mainstreaming is paramount to the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces Arsenal. During the weekly press briefing at the Minister of Information and Communications Conference Room in Freetown, he made this disclosure in response to allegations in a report published by Campaign for Human Rights and Development International Chadi accusing the ARSA of sexual harassment, gender-based violence and discrimination against women soldiers. Dennis Fraser again. In a press release by Chadi, 
titled Chadi Condemns Corruption, Sexual Harassment and Rights Violations in the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces Arxlav, we are highlights of series of allegations of abuse against women in the army and also issues of corruption. It goes further to state that for a long while, women in the army have been subjected to gender-based discrimination and violence in their workplace with no appropriate actions being taken. Meanwhile, with regards to response on the part of Axlaf, senior management of Axlaf has emphatically denied all allegations made against them as being false allegations and that Charlie committed the fallacy of ST generalization. On the first point I'd like to draw the press's attention to is the fact that uh, the report states that 20 sexual harassment recorded cases and over 200 um, gender-based violence cases were highlighted in the Republic of Syria and Forces. I'd like to state that um, as far as we are concerned, as an institution, we do not have short reports, but we've um, quickly um, instituted an investigation, but an investigation panel. But as I mentioned, we don't have any evidence of this report, none whatsoever. And what is clear is the fact that there are policies or systems in place to, to address issues of sexual exploitations and abuse or gender-based violence generally. The director of gender, Colonel Muhammad Fofana, vehemently dismissed all allegations of marginalization of female officers as fake news. He stated that violations against women in the army was a thing of the past, to which serious disciplinary actions have been taken against male officers who ventured in the act from low to high ranks. He said the army has always provided equal space for women in terms of promotions, study opportunities, and peacekeeping missions. The issue of uh, the gender mainstreaming in the arts lab, you all agree with me that uh, in the year 2009, the gender directorate was established to look into the, the gender gap in the arts lab, and also to promote the gender mainstreaming and empowerment. The very first commander of that department was no less a person but a brigadier. She's now retired, Brigadier Kestoya Kabia. She worked tremendously with the senior management to ensure that the gender mainstreaming issue is taken seriously. The very first commander of that department was no less 28% of female representation in the UN, close to 30%, that's the UN uh, standard. Axlaf reiterated their commitment to continue to promote gender equality and to erode every form of exploitation and abuse against women. They however called on Chadi to explore the privilege of unfettered access to credible information to verify issues. SLBC News Hour, Dennis Fraser reporting. Sierra Leone over the years has experienced several tragic fire incidents resulting in immense loss of lives and properties. The latest of these fire disasters has broken out at Waterlane, Mountain Court destroying properties worth millions of leons. Evelyn Cole was there for the SLBC. At about 9 a.m. on Friday, 7th January, the people of Waterland community awoke to wellings and screams of residents of number six, where a fire had engulfed their home with millions of properties burnt to ashes. However, no one was affected. I was sleeping 
when my wife shouted that I must go outside and that her house is on fire. If I would have gone in again, I wouldn't have returned alive. I don't even know how the fire started. I don't know how the fire began. I don't know who said what. I don't know what it is. What it is. Whatever my lot. Even though the fire did succeed in destroying properties in the home it started, the solidarity and collaboration of the community youths and the timely response of the Fire Department was enough to prevent a spilling into neighboring. Before the Fire Force did come, we the youth man and the community because so we were to sign at that time. Before the arrival of the Fire Force team, we the community youths came out in numbers to put out the fire. Although it was difficult to put out the fire because of the way the house was built, however, we are grateful nobody died. Some residents said the fire was ignited by electrical malfunction, whilst others claimed that it was caused by a gas explosion. The sub-officer of the Fire Force Department, Mawani Thomas, that investigations were ongoing to find out the actual cause of the fire. The fire will come to the lights. We are going to light, but we, all that we know them, will start from there, we do the job. We met the fire ablaze, but we did our job and we did it perfectly to put it out. But investigations are still ongoing. Whilst awaiting the results of what actually led to the fire, Mr. Thomas advised citizens to be mindful of their electrical appliances and other possible causes of fire to prevent future fire disasters. There has been several tragic fire incidents in recent times, most of them in Freetown. In November, a fire tanker exploded in Wellington, killing nearly a hundred people and injuring dozens of others. SLBC News are Evelyn Cole. Member of Parliament representing constituency 005 in Kailong District, Honorable Alicia Asumana Bokare, commonly called ABBA, has passed on. He became a member of Parliament in March 2018 under the ticket of the ruling party, the Sierra Leone People's Party. He was a member of four committees in the House of Parliament, Defense and Presidential Affairs Committee, Tourism, Youth Affairs, and NAXA and NGO Committees. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Fifteen pupils from various secondary schools in the Western area have received $398 each which is a little over three million millions from Jefferson Scholarship Foundation based in the United States of America. The support was to boost their education and help the young Sierra peoples actualize their full potential back home. Jonathan Turner reports. Jefferson Scholarship Foundation based in Missouri in the United States of America continues to demonstrate its commitment towards education in Sierra Leone, here in, here out. This year, the foundation has provided scholarships to less privileged and brightest pupils in the Western area with over 300 United States dollars each, which is little over 300 million leons. Jefferson Scholarship Foundation Scholarship Coordinator Daphne Winneba said the aim was to motivate bright, less privileged pupils to reach their academic zenith. They also have a 60% pass. If you don't have a 60% pass, you will not continue with the scholarship. You will be dropped. Another student will be nominated by the principal who will save their place. So usually, if they don't have 60%, they will not continue with the scholarship. So they have to have 60% average and above for them to continue with the scholarship. Parents of the beneficiaries lauded the organization for the kind gesture over the years. They say the scholarship have lessened 
the burden on them to obtain learning materials for their school children. This is how much I appreciate Jefferson. This is how much Jefferson Foundation means to me and my daughter. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. I sit here now telling myself that she should work hard through the grace of God to give back, as the chairperson was saying, that they should give back. I don't know if I'm going to be in the future. Now I'm working and I'm going to give somebody extra. In my old age, not the age but I'm telling now that she will be a child, a person that she should make a create a difference, a change, a positive difference in their life. School foundation. I sat to see the bar of the Regent Road Baptist Junior Secondary School thanked the foundation on behalf of her colleagues for the laudable support. She assured them that the cash support will be utilized for its intended purpose. This is undoubtedly a huge boost that the Jefferson Scholarship Foundation, based in the state of Missouri, USA, is making towards the educational sector in Sierra Leone, here in, here out. It is worthy for the people to make their books best friends so that they will become huge change agents for national development. For SLBC News, Jonathan Tonaipotin. You are watching News R on the weekend coming to you live from the Skellen Broadcasting Corporation from our New Landville studios. Football fans in the central part of the capital have gathered in various cinemas to watch the opener of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations between the host nation Cameroon against Burkina Faso. It was an exciting moment at the cinemas for supporters of the beautiful game, watching their continent stars showing their God-given talent. Jonathan Turner was out and about. Hundreds of football fans were not watching the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations opener match between the host nation, Cameroon, against Burkina Faso in a pub or at home, but instead had ventured out to their local cinema to see the game on the big screen. At the Emirates Cinema and Today Cinema on Savile Street in the central part of the capital, Freetown, the audience were behaving almost as if they were in the stadium, cheering for their continental superstars by their awesome display in the pitch of play. Viewers seemed impressed with the performance by the players and the setup of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations opening ceremony. Well, likely I'm impressed because me, an African man, I like to hear how football they play. Even though I did treat him in the play, a perfect football. Well, as we go as a Sierra Union, we form our civility self as we were able to carry the AFCON 2021. Hey, well, you know, in SA, Africa and Africa, but uh, small, small, like gradual. The performance was gradual because I see the European ball with Sion have significant day. But no whether they were in the over and uh, at least it would be one best uh, the difference day. The difference is so really in the city different like Lama and Adama and uh, what I mean so I really play for uh, as the villa. In way old ball, you see the difference. Really, you see the difference. Because way old ball, pass to Tiki Man, Kanja Man. But in flex, you see that European ball panel. Watching football in cinema is one of the special memories fans shared with one another. Many of them expressed their expectation for the 2021 tournament. I feel good for watch Africa in this score because the Kawe, I feel good much. The country owner, Sierra Leone, Leo Star. And qualified in the entire 
a workplace application since 2020. So I feel good here. So I wish they'll start good luck. So if you have a worry, talk to you. So I have no rest. I have to end. I don't have to pay for the little stuff. I don't have to pay for the little stuff. I don't have to pay for the little stuff. I don't have to pay for the little stuff. I don't have to pay for the little stuff. Go far out to this little scoffing. Cameroon won by two goals to one against Burkina Faso in their opening Group A match at the vast 60,000 seats Olambe Stadium in Yaoundé. With such class displayed by the indomitable Lions, fans of the Lions' expectation are high to secure the trophy for the six times, whilst Leon Stars are expected to win their match against reigning champions Algeria in the national team's first match in the AFCON since 1996. For SLBC News, Jonathan Tona reporting. Well, before coming on air, I was around the Buffel community to gauge the momentum among football fans. <laughs> The Total Energy African Cup of Nations is Africa's flagship event, not only as CAF but as Africa. It is an event that is unrivaled in appeal and prestige. The ambitions among sports fans in the country look high and it is a clear indication of the increasing popularity of African football around the world and shows clearly how AFCON has increased in stature and appeal to become one of the world's biggest sporting event. Sports loving fans stomp cinemas to watch kickoff between host Cameroon and Burkina Faso. Here are the Liverpool sports profiles. Fans converge to watch official opening of AFCON. That was so great. Just as you can see, the people are all calm, they're glad, um, everybody glad about this tournament. And I hope they coming back for the Ulster game, it will be better than this. When I see. Well, I think uh, we will be late. Liverpool cinema. Yes, well, the moments on the, especially we be say we nation qualify, for the nation So it got more attention at the country. It make people be more, be more concentration for watch the nation sport. AFCON is the largest sporting event in Africa and the third largest football competition in the world after the FIFA World Cup and the UEFA European Championship. SBC captured the momentum of fans at the Congo Market Cinema, one of the most watched cinemas. This is the Congo Market Cinema. And the African Cup of Nations, of course, you know, say for over 25 years, Sierra Leone, don't they out of that competition, we know they partake as a result of, we will, able, we will not be able to qualify. But now we don't get a chance for qualify. And the momentum, of course, when they see the cinema, just the way the African Cup of Nations begin. We can't forget about this game. Really, we want to put you support of the company and you know where they don't go for them to play this game. We try for encourage there will be a huge support for this first game. Let's see the Ebukina. This was the 33rd edition of the Total Energies AFCON, the second organized by Cameroon after the 1972 edition. 24 teams will try to win the so desired trophy for which Algeria title holder and the host country Cameroon are so eager to carry at the end. Ibrahim Samura, Freetown. He puts it to the other side. Genius. Cool as you like. Abubakar. Second penalty for Cameroon. Get The Nursery Schools Association is on three days of training for over 100 nursery school teachers in the country on early childhood development care and education. In the following report by Kariatu Kago, President of the Nursery School Association, Antoinette Ferguson says the training will give teachers the opportunity to set up the school environment and help them to keep up with the curriculum. 
preschools if it's the building of a child's personality and set up a strong foundation for a child's future. However, over the years, there have been unqualified teachers in all these schools. Hence, the training for these teachers to be stimulated by the workshop and to look for areas where they will improve their educational standards. Because that will help them to, to first of all, set up their schools, their school environment, and, and help them to keep within the curriculum which the government says we must be using in our nursery schools. And we are hoping it will stimulate them to go on to improve on their educational standards. According to the president, Syrian Teachers Union, Mohamed Bangura, their educators have to develop the early childhood care and education, ECCD, because a child's foundation depends on it, which will help them excel in public examinations. He appealed to the government to focus and invest on the ECCD program, which will be a step towards developing the educational system. If we want our children to actually do well, and uh, to stick and stay in the school system, let's try to develop the early childhood program so that our children, by the time they get onto age five, they are already conditioned mentally, psychologically, and occasionally to stay into the system and to be able to understand their teachers. We also have to appeal to the government because to put more attention to the ECBD program because their money is needed. Some of the teachers shared their expectations for the training as they have been longing for such opportunity. To have the enlightenment of this ECD because we have been hearing about it. Some of us um, in our schools, we do have the opportunity to practice it. But coming here, I think it's a platform for us to go back and do something. So it's a privilege for me and for some that don't have the idea with preschool curriculum and teaching. Um, it is good we, we are having this one for the new educators. They should know when and how to be with the children, how to control children, how to educate them with all the issues the kids they are having. These educators are expected to change their approach on creating positive school climate and responsive classroom doors and enhancing people's learning experiences. First of these news are Kadia Tukagbo reporting. In supporting the Wellington Fair victims, honorary consul and goodwill ambassador in Los Angeles, California, in America, Isatu Timbo has provided over 200 bags of rice as part of her own contribution to the fire victims still hospitalized at the Rokupa, Connops, and 34 military hospitals. Here is the report. It was two months down the lane when a fuel tanker exploded at Wellington, leaving scores of people burnt down and over hundreds rushed to hospital. With government and health partners' swift interventions, a good number of victims hospitalized in various hospitals had been discharged while others are undergoing routine medical treatment. However, the far victim continued to catch the eyes of different humanitarian organizations and philanthropists. One recently was the only consul and goodwill ambassador in Los Angeles, California, Isata Timbu, who has provided over 200 bags of rice to the fire victims still hospitalized at the Rokupa Government Hospital, Connaught and 34 military hospitals. The support also caters for survivors that have lost their families during the inferno. Momodu Timbo said Madam Isata Timbo provided the food support for the victims to cushion their sufferings and to console them. So, um, she does this just because um, out of um, humanitarian feeling for the born victims. So we are wishing um, for this not to happen again. Um, on behalf of Madam Isata Timbo, we say sorry to the born victims. So we have donated over 200 um, bags of rice to the born victims. 
officer in charge, 34 Metro Hospital, Captain David Fofana and Metro Margaret Sisi, Rokupa Government Hospital, appreciated the donors, saying a number of the five victims have been discharged, while others are coming for routine medical treatment. Beneficiaries applauded Madam Isa Tatimbo for providing them with food items, noting the help would cushion their sufferings. It's now time for entertainment news. Welcome to the entertainment news. I am Mariato Dukure. In entertainment headlines today, we spoke to Ordinato Elsie Kamara, aka Africano, the first runner up of the Big Sister Season 3, the Just Go Sister Season 3 Besties Season. Elsie Kamara was one of the popular roommates in the Big Sister Season 3 show. She recapped her journey in the house, the good times and the not so good times for her. She specifically said that the fact that other girls were referring to her as JC made her feel some kind of way. I see that when they come, now we really, really, now, now we mourn you really, and now you're going on our show, I hope you understand. Like, we're the ones bringing money, we're the ones bringing, like, the crowd, we're the ones bringing, like, we bring a lot to the show. So the fact that, if they say just, you know, they come for can't take the money, why make it a big the why you, why you, why make it open to the JC there? We know they can't focus on the movie, you understand? So I don't really, I feel like that's very ignorant. The season 2 winner did a live video, a Facebook live video after the completion of the season 3 where she was asking why are most Sierra Leoneans saying that Sierra Leoneans living in the diaspora won't or shouldn't win the show. As she, Elsie Kamara, was one of the Sierra Leoneans living in the diaspora on this year's show, what's her take on a major bonus Facebook live? You know, the plans that I have for Sierra Leone, like, some people they were not born, they don't raise Naya. They don't they don't even think about it. So the fact that the whole separation thing is, is ignorance, the word I really use is ignorance. And with the whole Major Bona, I really appreciate her video and um that's all I can say concerning that is I appreciate the video that she Elsa Potter said that she gave it her all and she is happy about her performance on the show. She did not go into the house with any prejudgment of the ladies. She allowed things to flow and said that now that she is out, she has a lot of plans. There's certain issues that I want to tackle, even in the entertainment, but also like um, educationally too, not just only entertainment wise. So entertainment wise is coming. I don't really want to speak much. I'm not the type of person to just, um, I do, I'm an action person. Um, when I write, I call it manifestation. When I write something down, I just like to do it. Sweet. Well, good job. Let's do it. Her message was emphasized on credibility and that she believes that whatever is or was meant to be would be. And she sent a message to future or for the future Big Sister contestants. Life after Big Sister is not what you think. Now you, Def, now you. It's not, it's not the job. You're the one that has to put more effort. You're the one that you, is you. Nothing for saving one of the big sister house. Everything is going to be roses and flowers and this and this and that. And also to the big sister show in, in particular or directly, um, credibility is very, very important. Um, I've heard many, many things from my fans, from my managers, my teams. I'm not really going to go into deep into it because it don't happen, it don't happen. And now, God, now so God say, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for joining us. I have been Maria Tudukuri. Keep watching the SLBC and good luck to our darling Leon Stars in Cameroon.
where let's now join Abu Kabia for all the latest updates in sports, especially the African Cup of Nations. It's Sports Updates on the News with me, Abdul Kabia. Thank you so much for joining us. The Total Energy's African Cup of Nations 2021 finally kicked off in a spectacular way with a winning start for Os Cameroon over Burkina Faso. SLBC Sport follows the story. The 33rd edition of the African Cup of Nations has kicked off with a winning start for the host nation, Cameroon, at the Paul Bia Stadium in Yaoundé. The tough match between Cameroon and Burkina Faso in Group A followed the opening ceremony, which provided great joy and performances from local artists. Burkina Faso took the lead in the 24th minute of play in the first half from Gustavo Sangari, who became the first player to score in the 2021 tournament. Cameroon overturned the lead to a sports kick in the closing minutes of the first half by their captain Vicent Abubakar. Musa Kalon, who serves as the technical director at FC Kalon, pointed out the importance of the AFCON as well as the development of the African game. It was a very good start. Um, the um, Nations Cup is not um, uh, very easy to, to compete in, but at the same time, uh, African football is growing as compared to 10 years or 15 years back. I'm happy to see uh, the quality of the game is getting higher and higher. Vicent Abubakar scored brace for Cameroon in the opener to earn all three points for the indomitable Lions. Musa Kalon played in Cameroon and acquired some knowledge about the Cameroonian game. It tells me that the indomitable Lions are no stranger to the competition and have a team with mental toughness. Football, it doesn't matter who first goal uh, is supposed to be who scores uh, more goals uh, at the end of the match. So and psychologically, it can boost you up to, to find a winning goal at the end. But um, Cameroon, they're very uh, mentally uh, strong. Uh, they came back very strong and they, they fought very hard to get the two penalties. And they, at the end, they managed their game very well. And then they succeeded to having the three points at the end. It is hoped that the Total Energies AFCON will ignite profound happiness for football fans across the world. For SBC Sports, Abdul Kabir. Sports of this on News Hour Hanks on that note. I'm Abdul Kabir. See you next time. Well, many thanks to Abu Kabia for all the latest updates in sports. To end the news, the main points again. President Julius Marabio has arrived safely in Ghana to attend the sixth extraordinary session of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of States and Governments. Football fans gathered in various cinemas to watch the opener of the AFCON 2021 between the host nation Cameroon and Burkina Faso. And field workers of Statistics Sierra Leone who participated in the census have expressed concerns over delay in some payments. Many thanks for watching News R with me, Ibrahim Samura. Viewers, don't forget to continue to watch the SNBC as will be screening all the matches of the Afghan nations in Cameroon. Good night and have a night rest.